One thing musicians always strive to do is to play with fluency. How do we get rid of those little pauses and hesitations in our music? In today's video, I'm going to show you how I get my left hand 158 patterns to feel relaxed and to sound fluent. And I'll break it down so you can learn how to do this too. Sound good? So go get your harp and let's get started. It's Anne here from Music Discoveries. Today is a tutorial video on left hand 158 patterns. Now, if that's new for you, let me just show you what I mean by a 158. It's really just as simple as counting strings. So, say we're doing a C 158 pattern, that means we're going to start on C. We're going to count that as string number one. Now let's just count strings. That's one, two, three, four, five. So we'll use a G as string number five. Six, seven, eight is another C. By the way, that distance or that interval of eight strings is also called an octave. And those strings will always be matching letter names. So that's a useful little bit of information. Now, most of you know that I'm a piano player. And so I remember what it felt like to transition from the piano to the harp. And I think one of the biggest struggles is to, to move from the feeling of looking down over a left hand position and seeing all of the fingers. And I think the first instinct is to do the same thing on the harp. Does this look familiar? You've probably seen this kind of thing before. This is not very strong and it's certainly not very elegant. So it's something that we have to work to do as we're transitioning from piano to harp. And honestly, I don't even think it's necessarily a piano playing thing. I think it's when we're beginners and we're getting used to these patterns, we want to see our fingertips on the strings. We have to micromanage every finger to make sure it's in the right place. And we have to learn to trust the hand shape and we might not be able to see those fingertips anymore. And so that's the first thing that we're gonna talk about today is how to trust and find that shape without looking at every single fingertip. So what I trained myself to do is to hover open and place. So rather than coming from above and getting into this kind of shape, I learned to approach the strings with the hands closed. Open the fingers and place. So we're going to practice that a few times so you can get used to approaching your 158 pattern um, beautifully and efficiently like this. So close the hand, hover close to the strings. My finger two, my pointer finger knuckle is very close to the G, the string that's number five in our pattern. It's maybe half an inch or a centimeter away from the G. So we approach with the hand closed, we hover, swing the fingers open. It's like you're opening an umbrella. The fingers just swing open from below. Notice I'm not coming up and over like this. I swing open from below. I hover or I open into the 158 shape and I need to go into that pattern all three strings place at the same time as a group. So perhaps the tendency might have been to find the C and then to go look for the G and then look for the C one finger at a time. That's going to slow you down. You're not going to be fluent if that's your habit. So retrain the hand to hover, open into the shape and place those three strings at the same time as a group. Now the tricky thing about this is you can no longer see your fingers on the strings. You can see your thumb, I can see that clearly, but I can no longer see my pointer finger or my finger four because they're placed low on the strings and my hand is hiding them. So I have to trust in this shape and I've done thousands of these shapes. So if it feels a little new and awkward for you, don't worry, you'll get better as you practice this. We hover open and place. 
give the strings a little squeeze just to imprint that shape in your hand even a little bit more. Let's do it again. Close the hand, hover, open, and place, and give it a little squeeze. Now, here's a little trick, a little, little secret trick that might just be helpful for you. So when I'm aiming for a shape, I don't use my lowest string as my landmark because I can't see my finger on that string. I use the upper string, the, the note that my thumb is on, is my landmark. So as I prepare for a shape, I'm looking at this higher C and I know that's where my thumb is going. I also know that my 158 shape will always skip two strings between my thumb and my pointer finger. So those are my visual cues that I use. I don't use the bottom string at all as a visual landmark. So let's try that. Close the hand, hover. I want your eyes to be on that middle C, the one that your thumb is going to go on. Open and place the three strings as a group at the same time. Okay, that's looking really good. Now let's work on getting your finger four to play well and to close into the palm of your hand. Let's go into our shape. We hover, open, and place. That finger four is nice and low on the string. Now just give that finger four a little squeeze and we need finger four to follow through into the palm of the hand. So one thing that I notice happens to people is sometimes that finger four actually ends up in a little tight curly bunch like this. And so when I turn my hand over, you see how that's in a little curl. That's not very relaxed, is it? So we do need that finger four to learn to follow through all the way into the palm of the hand. And if that's a little bit tricky for you at first, just give me a high five like this and practice closing three, four, and five into the palm all the way in. Don't worry, these fingers don't need to be straight. They can just relax. High five and close three, four, five, touch them into the palm. You're not pushing hard, you're not gripping, you're just making a nice, light, gentle contact. What you're training your fingers to do is to follow through completely into the palm. And I know this can feel a little bit unusual and new at first. So you could practice this anywhere. You don't need a harp to, to train your fingers to do this. Once you've done that a few times, come back to the strings, hover, open, and place. Now let's play the finger four and follow through into the palm. Let's do another one. Ready? Close into the palm. Beautiful. Make sure that your fingers don't end up in a little curly bunch like this. Okay, that's got too much tension in the hand. All right, beautiful. So let's get ready again. We'll play the finger four. And now the finger two. See how my thumb has not moved away from the strings. It's nice and stable. Now the thumb can push and close. Now what I want you to be careful of is that your thumb does not yank from the strings. So watch this one. Here's my four. It's beautiful. Finger two, beautiful. But be careful that the thumb doesn't pull like this to make a sound. The thumb has to do the work. Just give it a little push and close. If you, if you choose to do a raise or if you move to a new position, then you, the hand movement is a secondary movement. Okay, so let's do that one more time together. Hover close to the strings, open and place. Give it a little squeeze. Finger four follows through all the way into the palm of the hand. Good. Finger two closes into the palm and then the thumb pushes and closes. Gorgeous. Okay, nice job. Now let's work on playing the 158 pattern and counting out loud. So I'll go first. I'll do a pattern so you can see and hear what I'm going to do, and then I'll do a few extras so you can play along with me. Okay, I hover, open, and place, and I'm going to play and count one and two and three. And. So I'm in 3-4 time and I'm counting the eighth note subdivisions. Okay, let's try that together. Ready, play. One and two. 
two and three and okay good so now I want to do some patterns all in a row and now I'm going to really work on being more fluent and so here's the problem that I notice happens to people sometimes is people will play their 158 quite beautifully and quite and count quite beautifully like this one and two and three and and then they'll go look for the next pattern one and two and three and well guess what there are pauses now so your left hand has to reopen and place earlier and that's the secret so watch closely and i'll show you exactly where you need to reopen the hand and when exactly to replace the hand one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and so do you see that i'm reopening the hand on and three and i'm replacing the hand on and here i'll come in close so you can watch this and you can try it with me we hover open place give the strings a little squeeze okay ready play one and two and three and 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 are you getting the hang of that you see how you need to replace the hand on the and of three and then your playing can be more fluent so now let's take this for a little test drive by going through a chord progression. So our chord progression will start on a C158 pattern. Then we will skip up to an E158 pattern. If you're on a small harp, you can step up to F, but if you're on a large harp, why don't you challenge yourself to go all the way down to an F, that it will be a, a bigger leap. Remember, you're aiming for your thumb. Use your thumb as your visual landmark. Then we'll step up to G and come home to C. All right, here's the chord progression. Here's, I'll, I'll put the chord progression here below so you can watch it. Let's count. And remember to reopen and place earlier so you can be fluent along with me. Okay, here we go. Hover, open, place, prepare your C158 pattern. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. One and two and three and. One and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and okay good now if any of you have uh, learned or maybe listened to my song called in the clouds you might recognize that chord progression this is the chord progression for the introduction and it's also the chord progression that's used for much of the song so let's practice the 158 pattern and i'll play in the clouds we'll just do the the first section or so and uh now if you if you've learned the song you probably learned it with one three five patterns but do you remember there was a, a special bonus version which is a lead sheet here it is right over here and so that means you can choose any pattern that you want to go along with your melody. And I'd suggest that you try it with this 158 pattern. This is a perfect place to, to create a little study for yourself. So here's in the clouds using 158 patterns. Let's prepare, let's get ready. So again, we're doing the C chord, E, down to F and up to G. Okay, here we go. One and 
two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three and one and two and three do it again Good, that's a nice start. Another piece that you might like to try that you, where you can practice moving your left hand into position a little bit earlier like that is my arrangement of the Aaron Boat song. So I did a video uh, a couple weeks ago of the, the new arrangement of Aaron Boat Song. Here it is right over here. And if you watch and listen very carefully, watch my left hand and you'll see that I place on the and of three. Here, have a listen. All right, I hope that was helpful. If you're interested in practicing that technique a little bit more and you're looking for pieces uh, that require that kind of move in your left hand, whether they're one five eights or something else, that kind of timing, I'll list two or three pieces down in the description box below so you can check them out and see if they're a good fit for you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.